Good evening, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Time to make another video on the last night of the year 2018. It is December the 31st here in Southwest Michigan. It is a Monday night. It is 8.24 at night. And uh, yeah, it's been at least 24 hours since I made a video and I have a used book haul. I want to get these books down in the lower level, down into the library. And tomorrow is January the 1st, 2019. I already have my diary ready for tomorrow morning. Page 1, January the 1st, 2019. Got my January 2019 folders ready. And uh, I'll put these down in the storage bin with the other diaries from the, the last couple of years. I ended on page 1108 for the year 2018. So usually I take a picture of all my diaries from January on up until December and I post those in my live journal, my live journal communities, uh, paper expressions and embodiment. And I also post them in my uh, online diary, Crooked Fingers. So I'll do that before I go to bed tonight. So yeah, so I'll put these out of the way. We got all this crap here. As far as what I read today, I read the Bible. And I today, you know, I thought that the library was closed today. But I looked on the website and the library was open until 6 tonight. So I did go volunteer at the library used bookstore, The Book Nook, from 10 until 1 in the afternoon. And when I was there, I read once again, Father, Son, and Spirit, the Trinity in John's Gospel by Andreas J. Kissenberger and Scott R. Swain. So I basically read that. Now, I have to admit, I was kind of tired today because last night, Sunday night, my wife slept until 7 o'clock in the evening. She slept all afternoon until the evening. She was totally exhausted. So uh, she didn't go to church. So I was watching the professional football all day yesterday, and my wife, when she got up, we watched some more football. And then we watched some program on PBS, and so we didn't get to bed till 1 o'clock in the morning, which is way past my bedtime. But my wife was wide awake, and so I stayed up with her. So we went to bed about 1 o'clock, and this morning I got up at 8.24. And then I had breakfast, and I didn't even have time to read my books or write in my paper diary. And I went to the book nook. But at the book nook, I read this. And this evening, I read, I got out of the lower level. I was reading this a couple of months ago on Nicaea and its legacy and approach to fourth century Trinitarian theology by Louis Iris. So I was reading this. I, I'm this far in it. I'm on page 304. I was reading this. It's, it's, it's pretty academic but very interesting if you're into Trinitarian theology, 4th century Trinitarian theology. Somebody asked me in Booktube if I had the Ancient Commentary series. You know, I have the Medieval Christian series, and I have the Reformation series, and I do have, not all of them, but I have the ancient Christian commentary on scripture. This is the one in the Gospel of John. She wanted to know if I had this. I hadn't shown it. I do have it. I don't look at it that much because it uh, covers the same material in the other one in uh, early Christian and medieval commentators that on the church, 
Church's Bible series that I've been reading in the mornings. But I do look at these. There are in my main study. I have maybe 23 in the series. I don't go every one of them. Same as in the... Uh, I do like... I, I like to get the Matthew one, the Gospel of Matthew, an ancient Christian commentary series. That's the only one I'd like to get. There's certain books of the Bible I really like <laughs> that I study a lot and read a lot, like the Gospel of John, the Epistle of Hebrews, the Epistle of Galatians, Hebrews, Deuteronomy, Genesis, the Psalms, the Song of Solomon are ones I read a lot of commentaries on in biblical studies and literary studies and New Testament studies and Old Testament theologies and things. But um, so this morning, that's what I read at the book nook Father, Son, and Spirit, the Trinity in John's Gospel. And I read some of this this evening. At the book nook today, I brought home two books today. Now, I did bring home, this is Monday, Friday. The bookstore was open, I think. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was open Friday. But I'll show the ones I got today. I got this. Like I said, they've been going through the library, taking books out of circulation. And I was looking at all the carts of books that they, t you know, now they're going through the novels. Most of, 95% uh, of the novels in the library that they're taking out, I don't, I've never heard of. I never would read them anyway. But this I saw. I hadn't understood by Diego de Seville, and this is the Europia. I, as you all know, if I see a book by Europia, if it's used and it's cheap, I'll get it. Even though I don't always read the genre genre of that, but so I got this. I already had one of those in my library and by Diego de Seville. My mother-in-law drinks. This is I hadn't understood. This is translated out of Italian by, what's his name? Oh, Anthony Sugar, Sugar, And I don't think he translated this one. Yeah, same guy. So I read a little bit of this, and like I said, I don't have them. I can't stuff any more stuff inside my brain. I have things on my to be red pile or things I've been reading that I want to finish in the year 2019 before I start anything new. I also brought home this. This is, I think, been shown on BookTube. This is Prairie Fires, The American Dreams of Laura Ingalls Wilder by Cat Cat Caroline Frazier. Uh, I, I never read the Little House on the Prairie books. I used to watch the the TV show with our children, but uh, I got this because I it's a New York best books, notable books of 2017, and I like biographies, especially of of 19th century America, uh, the prairies, the Great Plains. So I got this today at the book nook. Now last. Friday, I brought home from the book nook a novel by Anthony Huxley. This one, this is taken out of circulation. It is After the Many Summer Dies the Swan by Otis Huxley. I already had an old paperback, but I, w I wasn't sure, so I, I got this and I brought it home. So I'll take this back to the book nook uh, next Friday. But I have this copy of it. After the, after the mini summer dies the swan. It says here in the back, uh, a million dollar mansion built of stone and greed and false glitter of Hollywood. Now remember, Huxley was in Hollywood and I think he did uh, either screenplays or something. And he wrote this, I think when he was in California. Remember that, I think he was a, older and there was a fire and destroyed his house and 
lot of his possessions at that time period. A million dollar mansion built of stone and greed and false glitter of Hollywood are the backgrounds of this gripping novel of a man's desperate search for a secret that is forbidden to mankind. Huxley, famed author of Brave New World, probes deeply into the turbulent emotions, man's need for love, a woman's need for security, and the burning urge to do that which is better left undone. The result is one of the most fascinating novels of our time. And then I got Crazy Cock by Henry Miller. I had this already, but um, I didn't want to leave in the library for some innocent soul to pick up and get corrupted by. Now, this novel was published around 1988. It was found in the private archives, were archives of Henry Miller. It was one of his earliest writings that was never published until the 80s. So it's really just, I don't know why they published it. You probably want to make money off his estate or something. And then I got Nietzsche, an Asian thought, edited by Graham Parks. This is a series of essays on how the philosophy of Nietzsche affected Asian thought, Asian philosophy. How, so it just, it was only a dollar. And I have been reading last year, this year, I got this biography of Nietzsche, I Am Dynamite, A Life of Nietzsche by Sue Prilex that I gotta, hopefully I'll get in the year 2019. And I'm still trying to read Hiking with Nietzsche, A Becoming Who You Are by John Keg. So that's why I picked up this book on Nietzsche. Plus I, I collect books on Nietzsche, Nietzsche's writings, biographies, anything on Nietzsche, as long as it's cheap, doesn't cost me a lot of money. And then I picked up at the Book Nook Friday. This is the Library of America, uh, Washington Irving. These are his three Western narratives, A Tour on the Prairies, Astora, The Adventures of Captain Bonneville. I already have other ones in that Library of America series on Washington Irving, Bra uh, Brackbridge Hall, Tales of a Traveler, The Aramba, the Arabambra, I can't pronounce that, and History and Tales and Sketches. So now I have all three volumes, the Library of America on Washington Irving. I also have this old hardback of, of uh, History of New York from the beginning of the Dutch to the end of the Dutch dynasty. This was uh, published, this was um, by Washington Irving. A friend, of my, a, fr a friend of mine gave me this a couple of years ago. So those are the book nook halls, used books. I also went to the local thrift stores the other day and I found, now this is, now I wanna, the, you all know that I took boxes and boxes of used books to the book nook. And one of the, I took all my Jane Smalley novels to the book nook to be, when I was de-hauling. And, but for many years, I looked for this Jane Smalley novel, The Greenlanders. This is one that always escaped my ability to find. And the other day at the Goodwill, I found The, Gra the Greenlanders, finally, by Jane Smiley. And now I don't have all her other writings. It'd be so cool to add. I had 13 of her other novels. And I thought, oh, I'm never going to read those. And so I, I took them to the book nook to be sold. Now I have the one I've always been looking for. And now I don't have the other ones to add to it. So there's always regret for bookworms, book freaks. But now I have the one I've always wanted. And now I, maybe I'll read it. I also found this novel by... A, this is a the novel by, a, by Maria Dunez. She is a Spanish writer from Spain. This was translated by Daniel Holland. I didn't know anything about it. It's called A Time in Between. And I really don't know much about it. I read about it. It had a, over a thousand people in, li in uh, library thing had it. It was a sensation in Spain and was translated into English. And uh, 
One thing I do know that takes place during the Spanish Civil War, which you all know I collect books on the Spanish Civil War in Spain, also novels or anything on that time period in uh, Spanish Civil War. So I also collect uh, A.S. Brannett. This is a novel I didn't have in my collection by her. This is the biographer's tale. This is uh, Manhattan Transfer by the American early 20th century writer John Dos Passos. Uh, I collect his writings, his biographies, anything by him. This is nonfiction, The Empire of Wealth, Epic History of American Economic Power by John Steele Gordon. And then I picked this up at another thrift store called Bibles for Mexico. This is a history of Newport, uh, Rhode Island, called Newport, A Lively Experiment, 1639 to 1969. I like reading uh, colonial history, uh, history of America. And it looked really interesting. It had all kinds of nice photos inside of colonial times of Newport. Things like this. It was only 27 cents. So, those are the thrift store finds, the, the book nook haul. So that's what I got. Now I got Jane Smalley, but I wish I had the other ones. I had A Thousand Acres by her, her novel Moo. I had all kinds of stuff by her. But this is the one I've been looking for for years. The Greenlanders. It says here, I, I think it takes place, it's like a historical fiction. I think it takes place in Greenland. <laughs> Maybe it's a history of the people of Greenland back in... I know it has a Viking ship on there, probably back in the really early history of Greenland. I did get a book in the mail. Uh, I was, I, I, I've been reading this book off and on, How to Read a Novelist by John Freeman. I've shown this. And I was reading the one with his little interview with James Wood, who writes for The New Yorker. He's a literary critic. He teaches literature, and uh, I have his other, I, so this is a book I didn't have by him, How Fiction Works by James Wood. I had his, he has a new novel out that I have pre-ordered to come out in paperback in the spring, but this is another novel. He writes not only literary criticism, but he has written novels. This is the book Against God by James Wood. And he wrote these two books of literary criticism that I have read over the years, the Irresponsible, Irresponsible Self on Laughter and the Novel by James Wood. And he wrote The Broken Estate, Essays on Literature and Belief by James Wood. I highly recommend James Wood. Uh, uh, I always, so I've, I've been, I was reading this when I was watching football yesterday. How Fiction Works by James Wood, and uh, so I was reading this along with uh, watching football. But I really recommend his Broken Estate and his Irresponsible Self by James Wood. He's a very good, he's just excellent literary critic. And... Uh, I'm still getting into how fiction works. Uh, so I'm reading this probably this week and over the weekend. Today is Monday. Yeah, I'll probably read this this week. And so that's it here in uh, my my uh, book world. What I'm reading, what I've gotten to add to our library. Here, as far as the weather today, it's been raining, cold, drizzle. It's not snowing. So I'm thankful for that. I don't like snow. So that's it. I, I probably, tomorrow night my wife works, and maybe I'll do what I, when I plan to read in January, even though I've mentioned some of the books that I will be reading 
in the year January 2019. I'm always reading the Bible. I mean, as far as in the Gospel of John, I'm uh, today I read. I'm still on the Gospel of John, chapter six, the feeding of the five thousand. So that's where I'm at. I've been read I've been primarily reading the last couple the last couple of mornings I've been reading that book on uh, the Father, Son, and Spirit Trinity in the John's Gospel. It's a re I really enjoy this series. Uh, I thought about showing all the ones I have in this series, the New Studies in Biblical Theology. Really excellent series to have if you're really into studying the Bible. It's very evangelical, very conservative, reformed. And I do recommend the Ancient Christian Commentaries on Scripture and the Reformation Commentary on Scripture and anything by any varsity press is worth... They're really, they publish really excellent books. So I'm going to sign off. This is the last, last day of the year 2018. I hope you have a good new year. I do thank you for all the subscribers and the, the comments and uh, I hope that you have a blessed new year and till next time, bye.